We're supposed to get rain. <laughs> kind of looks like clouds more than rain yet. When God chooses to reveal himself, just like he did with Joshua, I mean Joshua, with uh, Joshua, yeah, that's, good. that's a good J word. Just like he did with Jacob at Bethel, he doesn't do it in our timing. <laughs> we like to think he does, you know, because it might kind of like connect with some point in time that we, you know, are involved in, like either sunrise, sundown, or devotional time, or Sunday time, or whatever time that you set aside, you know, you put over here, or you put it over there, or you say, this is my time, God, you meet me here now, now or else forget it. Well, God doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, God has his own timetable, and we conform to it. You may not realize that, but that's the way he does it. So, when you're wanting God to speak to you, and you're committing something to him, more often than not, most of the problems of God not speaking to you has to do with you and not him. You may not be waiting long enough to listen, or you may not be listening long enough to wait, or you may not be listening at all or waiting at all. Do you understand what I mean? It's kind of like when we were not a industrialized nation, we had long periods of time where we had hard physical labor where if you were let's just say you're working on a railroad you know and you were like driving the spikes down because there are people that still work on the railroad and they still drive spikes down that's my brother-in-law <laughs> he worked on the railroad <laughs> all his life and uh, drove spikes down or was on the road game for a while you know thank God he became a roadmaster but the point being is that when you have hard physical labor or like when I worked in the potato fields picking spuds, you have a lot of time to think. You know, there's only a certain amount of effort in thinking that's required to like work in the potato fields or maybe dry spikes in the ground. And after that, you know, it kind of becomes a routine. Or if you're working, we'll say on a production line. You know, after a while, you know, I kind of like I remember working as a bottle inspector, and I used to inspect wine bottles and pull them off the conveyor belts, you know, as they go by, you know, and just kind of... All you do is see a flash, you know, you just pull flashes. You didn't even bother really thinking about it, you just kind of pulled it about this kind of motion, you know, and it was just like a chute was stuck up here and the bottle was right here, so you just went... You wore green glasses, and it was kind of neat, you know, mindless, <laughs> but you had a lot of time to think. Well, in agrarian societies, farmers especially, or other types of handmade environments, you have time to think. And when you have time to think, you have time to listen. That's what in the Bible we see lots of times when God has spoken to some of these people that we read about having conversations with God, is that they have a long time to spend. It isn't like they suddenly got in a car and drove down to Bethel, you know, and decided, hey, I'm going to hear God speak, and now I'm going to jump back in my car and head back to Jerusalem. They walked <laughs> most of the time. And if you've ever walked in a desert, you don't walk fast. <laughs> you sweat if you do. So you kind of walk slow, and you have time to talk. You have time to walk. You have time to think. You have time to wait. And a lot of times, that's what the issue is in our modern times with people not hearing God speak. Part of the hindrances of our timetable is not recognizing we're not working with His timing. So, what I like to do is I like to tell people, look, Jesus got up way before sunrise, you know, and He spent a long time kind of like, you know, waiting on the Lord. And how I got answers to my prayers more often than not was I thought about them and this is going to sound terrible to somebody out there I'm sure they're going to like groan because maybe they, they have some prayer requests or something but I prayed for something and I waited years for God to answer and I got the answer I always did, I've gotten answers to everything I've ever prayed for and maybe sometimes I forgot some, I don't know but <laughs> mostly you know, and anything that I ever asked about when it came to studying the scriptures, 
the same thing I did, was that I asked God to reveal it to me, and He did. Sometimes it took a long period of time. Sometimes it took a year or more. Sometimes even longer. But the point of it being is that I was always looking for and waiting for the answer to come. So in my mind, I had it kind of like a checklist. You know, it's like, oh, hey, that's an an that's the answer to the prayer. Oh, I remember that. I prayed that back, you know, 1950, whatever. <laughs> Kidding, 60, 70, 80, something like that. But you too shouldn't be so wrapped up with the timing of God's answering as much as God does answer. He will, I promise you. I mean, not that I have anything to say about it because, frankly, my promises don't mean nothing. But His do. And He said He hears your prayer. He will answer. And that's one reassurance that you should take with you whenever you do talk to God is that you have a full confidence knowing that He hears your prayer. Now, His timing may not be the same as yours when it comes to answering it. So you have to sometimes, well, if I could give you a hint, write it down. Put a date on it. Write it down and wait till the answer comes, you know. And then once you get, you know, a book full of, you know, prayers written down and the answers written next to them, you'll get to where your mind will automatically remember that you prayed and God answered, you know. And then you won't worry about it. Because it's pretty easy that God always will come through. I have no problem with that. I can tell you that every time. Hey, he came through. It may not have been the way I thought, but it was like, wow, that's cool. That's a new way. I never thought of that, God. That's kind of neat, the way you did it. So, today in this devotion I'm reading is received by faith, because it also applies to me today, as I'm waiting on an answer from the Lord. <laughs> Lord, please answer today. <laughs> See, I'm like you. <laughs> you know. And when he doesn't, I just go, okay, <laughs> it'll be tomorrow. So, on the one hand, on the surface issues of my life, yeah, you know, sometimes I get a little, hey, you know, my, my flesh goes, yes, I want an answer now. But then other times it's more like, okay, you know, so he didn't answer now. He'll, he'll get through. He gets through to me. I always get my answers. I know he'll tell me, just not yet. Receive by faith. I pray if I have found favor in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you that I may find favor in your sight. And the Lord said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Exodus 33, 13, 14. That's kind of what we're praying for, like right now, kind of moving and stuff, you know, as we're looking forward to rest, you know, a good place to call our Bethel, you know, our place of the house of God. You know, we can just rest, be still, wait on the Lord. Everything that we receive from God comes by faith. When you are waiting for Him to speak to your heart, just believe that He will speak to you and even if you don't hear anything right at that moment he will believe that because you have acknowledged him you can expect to see his hand moving in your life all day long then step forward knowing that he will keep you on the right path because you have asked him to do so watching God's hand of favor move on your behalf is one of life's greatest delights Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And that's the proverb that she's talking about that directs us to God to commit our day unto him so that he will direct us in our day. That he'll intervene in a way to cause us to have second thoughts about something that maybe we shouldn't do. And then if you go past that, well, of course, what do you say about that? You suffer the consequences. <laughs> And then you don't hear God so good. But if you obey the Lord as you hear Him, then your ears get used to hearing Him, your heart gets used to knowing Him, you get used to your spirit following Him, and then it becomes easy to kind of yield your life to Him as you see how He directs you every day. And slowly but surely, you'll get to where the answers come a little quicker <laughs> than you think, and more often than not. You'll know what the answer is as you pray it. And sometimes, man, that's just a neat thing between you and God, isn't it? That's what you want. So just don't be discouraged if, you know, some things you haven't quite got the right answer on or you don't understand it yet and God hasn't quite, you know, revealed to you what it means or how it means or what He's doing or how He's doing or some prayer that you just threw up to God because, you know, somebody gave you a prayer request. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but I, 
I'm a little cautious on prayer requests. I pray as the Lord leads me. But if the Lord doesn't lead me to pray, I don't really pray for prayer requests just because somebody asks me. I kind of go, uh, yeah, Lord, you want me to pray for that? Or you want me to kind of like, kind of leave it alone, you know? Because I like my batting record. 100%. <laughs> so, I don't know, you know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. But what you should do is seek the Lord and let Him be your delight so that you would walk with Him every day, talk with Him, and then listen carefully and wait until He tells you. Don't just jump ahead because you think you know. Wait till He actually tells you. Then the way you go will be blessings unto you and you'll be thrilled at how it works out. Oh sure, it may be challenging at times because there's always challenges in life. But even as they challenge you, God will be there in the midst of it and show you what He's doing through it. And that's what's cool. God revealing himself to you. I can't think of anything any better than that. Can you?